Sweet Gems. Today we are at Universal Orlando and we will also be at Islands of Adventure because we are for the first, well, it's our first time, we're doing an Orlando Informer Meetup. This is an after hours event that's happening this weekend and then a couple other weekends over in December over here at Universal and Islands of Adventure. Yeah, this is actually a separate, a separate ticketed event, so if you're a pass holder or are, you just enjoy coming to Universal and you'd like to go with minimal wait times and included food, you can go to Orlando Informer's website and look at their events and buy tickets. So this, this is separately ticketed. You can't just come if you're a pass holder. Um, I am super excited about this because they are providing a bunch of food. There's going to be super short wait times for all the rides. And we have Christmas and holiday decorations everywhere throughout the parks. We've already seen some awesome stuff. Let's go look at some more. So as you can see, the park still has a lot of people in it. That's because the park hasn't closed yet. But a lot of these people are going to be gone soon. So we're going to see this place really empty out because it is a ticketed event to be here after the park closes. But let's just take a minute to appreciate how beautiful that these decorations look over here at Universal. It's November, but you definitely are feeling the holidays right now. Oh, I love it. I'm okay with that. I'm, I, I have no complaints about that whatsoever. And speaking of holidays, the Tribute Store is now set up for the holidays. We're going to go inside and take a little peek, show you guys a few of the favorites that are in there. I see something that says Santa's Workshop, so I'm really curious. Let's go take a look. As soon as you come into the store, we have the display showing the Elf of the Year. I'm assuming this is uh, portraits you can actually take and pay for and have your portrait put on the wall. Well, it's all kids. And it's all kids. And then we also have pets. This looks like our this Roxy. This looks exactly like our cat. <laughs> she, are, she looks like she's looking for treats, too. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. I know you got treats somewhere. We're the greenies. Here. Look how cool this is. We have a giant nutcracker as soon as we walk in. There's also a train going across the uh, oh, that's right. top yep. over here. Take a look at that. Super, super cool. And then we have our little wall of ornaments here. Oh, this is all Coca-Cola stuff. This is all Coca-Cola like products. Like uh, super blinged out. That's cool. <laughs> I like it. I figured you would like that. <laughs> and then this is like Santa's workshop here. This must have been what they meant by Santa's workshop. We have all the little toys. And there's some cool little hidden gems in here. We've got... The DeLorean from Back to the Future, E.T. and his spaceship, some more of the DeLoreans over there. That looks like a boat from Jaws. Oh, so this over here looks like it's interactive. So if you're a fan of Earl the Squirrel and you want like a phone case or an ornament, this is the place to go ahead and do it. You can go ahead and design your own um, tribute here to, to whatever you want if you like Earl the Squirrel. <laughs> All right, so we are in the second room in the Tribute Store, and this is actually where they have the treats set up. Um, this used to be in room four, I believe, and uh, now it has moved to room two. They want, they want to give you the treats as soon as possible, which, again, I have no complaints about because the stuff in that display case looks delicious. How fun is this? This little area over here looks like... You're an employee, and this is like your board to get your information about work. <laughs> Take a look at this over here. This is uh, bright bulbs, and then Earl's top nuts. <laughs> That's fine. They even have the Earl the Squirrel electrical hazard, like he's bitten through the wires. <laughs> Warm freezer nut storage. <laughs> How fun is this? Now we're in a room that looks like it's themed to everything Grinch and Dr. Seuss. Yeah, this is the Grinch's sled over here. That's awesome. Yeah, have all these little machines. This is great. Oh man, look at this. It's snowing in here. This is all the Harry Potter stuff. Mm -hmm. 
How super cool. awesome is this? This is where you can get the winter apparel too. You can get scarves representing the different houses. And there's some long sleeve shirts. And that looks like a spirit jersey to me. Let's take a minute to really appreciate this. This looks like there's icicles coming down. How fun is this that? Is beautiful. And then over here by the register, it actually looks like it's snowing. I love this. So it looks like we have a little light show set to music on the tree here in the center. got to catch the tail end of the uh, the, sh the fireworks and, and uh, fountain show and uh, we also were the last riders of the day the official Universal Day on the mummy and we had the whole train to ourselves I gotta tell you that's a much different ride when you're by yourselves we we're flying through the turns and we got airtime for days on those hills really cool if you could ever get a train to yourself on the mummy do it it's great now, they're kicking everybody out of the park that doesn't have one of these wristbands and is part of Orlando and former meetup event. So I went ahead and pulled up the menu and map for tonight, and I'm gonna start looking around to see what kind of delicious goodies we can get into. Tickets for tonight's event, after tax and fees and everything was uh, accounted for, were $215 per person. Uh, but as I said before, that includes food all night, unlimited, at many of the restaurants. Uh, I know that there are like pizzas available over at the cafe in uh, Marvel Island. And uh, the Blondies is gonna be open and I think they, they're serving Dagwoods. So there's plenty to eat. The event runs from 8 p.m. until 1.30 a.m. So we're gonna be here all night. It looks like we have our own DJ. I pull up the menu, the restaurants that are open tonight at Universal are going to be Mel's Drive-In, Krusty Burger, Cletus Chicken Shack, Lisa's Tea House of Horror, The Frying Dutchman, Luigi's Pizza, Bumblebee Man's Taco Truck, Duff Brewery, The Leaky Cauldron, Florian, uh, Florian Fortescue's Ice it's Cream. The ice Cream over Yeah, in Ice Cream Island. Parlor, Fountain of Fair Fortune, The Hopping Pot, Richter Burger, uh, Louis Italian restaurant, Finnegan's, and Monsters Cafe. At Islands of Adventure, we're gonna have Cinnabon at the Port of Entry, Cafe Four, Captain America Diner, Blondie's, Wimpy's, Kathy's Ice Cream, Thunder Falls Terrace, The Burger Digs, Pizza Predatoria, Three Broomsticks, Hogshead, Fire Eaters Grill, Circus McGurkis, Hop on Pop, and they also have a special drink, the Pumpkin Mule which is available. That, I believe, is an upcharge. That's gonna be $12 plus tax. We decided that we're gonna get some dinner over here at Mel's. This is one of the places that is open and serving food. It seems like a lot of the places that are open and serving food are like burgers and simple food, which is perfectly fine with me. We'll probably eat something again when we get to islands and take advantage that we can keep eating. Uh, the food is just ready to go. You just ask for what you want and they just give it to you. For us, it did take an extra minute because for me, I did have to ask for a gluten-free bun. But if you're getting normal food, it's just ready to go. But this didn't take too long. It just took a couple extra minutes. So we're going to eat something here and then we're going to start riding some rides and doing some stuff. So I just want to show now the difference between earlier and now. How awesome this is that there are not a lot of people here. I love it. Just to give you an idea, my favorite episode of South Park is when Eric Cartman had his own theme park. 
and was excited there were no lines because that's totally me. <laughs> but this is so awesome. Everything's so lit up nice and there's just not a lot of people here. We rode Transformers and we literally walked onto it. And um, over here is Adam. And then we see Finnegan's. This is actually one of the restaurants that's serving food tonight. So this is really cool. Oh, look, and over here by the palace, it says Orlando Informer. It's all lit up just for us. <laughs> we are here in Diagon Alley, and Gringotts is decorated for Christmas, as well as the entire alley. Take a look at this. So cool looking. Lights and wreaths and garland. It's all Christmassy. And uh, our next stop is actually going to be this ice cream shop right here where we can apparently get some really interesting flavors. We are going to go inside and see what's there. So in Diagon Alley, if you're not familiar with the ice cream shop over here, I believe it's pronounced Florian Fortescue. And um, what it is is they have like these strange concoctions of ice cream flavors. They do have normal stuff too and you can also get butterbeer ice cream here. So at the soft serve, it's like a base, like this one is vanilla, and what they do is they put like a ribbon of pistachio through it. So this is pistachio. Adam got, I believe, toffee apple. Yep. Yeah, so you see that the rib ribbon looks a little bit different over there, but I've had the hard ice cream over here too, and that ice cream is also very good. Um, they're just fun, it's just fun flavors. But this, I wanted some soft serves. As you can see here, it's just like going through it. Yeah, it's just vanilla ice cream, and this has some pistachio going through it. So it's good, very good. Scattered throughout the park are these little mobile bars where you can get beer and wine and some liquor. Um, but also keep in mind that these are not included in your admission. You pay extra for these, but the prices seem pretty reasonable. And then uh, over here is the Fast and Furious gift shop. Uh, we will be skipping the Fast and Furious ride. It's not good. <laughs> Skip! Next on the agenda is going to be riding the Rip Ride Rocket, and then it's off to Islands of Adventure. We still have a few hours left of our night. I'm excited. And right here by Despicable Me, is where there's a little pass through over to Islands of Adventure. This way. On our way over to Islands, we are passing by the old Blue Man Group building. Uh, I'm really sad that show is not here anymore. I got to see it one time, and it was one of the most amazing shows I've ever seen in my life. But Grinchmas is going to be here for the holidays. So I would like to come back here and check that out. Our pathway from Universal to Islands has dropped us off over here in Seuss Landing, which means that we're near Circus McGurkis, which is serving pizza tots, which I love. Usually we get them at Green Eggs and Ham. They have them over at Circus McGurkis. So I think we're gonna stop there and shovel some more food down our mouths. Pizza tots. Down the hatch. These are so good. I forgot how good these are. It's very simple. It's tots, pepperoni, sausage, cheese, and sauce. But these are a little smaller than you normally get. But it's so good. I wanted to show you guys some of the Christmas decorations that are even inside of Circus McGurkis. We've got the Grinch hanging out here with some Christmas trees. And uh, as soon as we come outside, this is where all the really cool decorations are. This park looks gorgeous. And there's fireworks going on right now. Yeah, this looks so cool. Look how beautiful this is. The planter is full of poinsettias. I absolutely love this park. I love the way this looks. This is great.
Now we are going to get to see the beautiful Christmas decorations inside of Hogsmeade. I think we're going to go ride Hagrid's because it seems like it's a decently low wait time. Oh, this looks so cool, man. Beautiful. I don't know if some of you guys saw, but over in Universal Japan, there was a big snowstorm, and this section of the park looked pretty authentic. Um, there was snow all over everything, and it looked so cool. But uh, since we, it doesn't snow here in Florida, we have to use the uh, the fake stuff, but it looks great. And this is probably the busiest area that we've seen of the whole, uh, both Universal and Islands. Oh, absolutely, but it always is. That was kind of expected. Denied. It is closed for the night. Since Hagrid's is closed, we're just gonna have to go on VelociCoaster. One thing we did not know coming into this event is that the big roller coasters, like the most popular rides, like Hagrid and VelociCoaster, they don't run the entire event. So this event starts at eight o'clock, but they're trying to get people out of the park. So they close down the rides until 8.30, so you kind of lose a half hour of ride time right there. And then the, right now it's almost midnight and the lost the coaster, we wanted to ride it again, but we can't get back online for it. The sign says it's closed. So whoever's right. in there is still getting to ride, but they're not letting anyone else on there. We got and, to do it once, but yeah. when we went to go for a re-ride, they said that was it. So Hagrid's actually closed at 11.30, and VelociCoaster closed at midnight. Now, this event runs till 1.30, so that means that there is between one and a half to two hours where you don't get to actually do everything. Um, also, the food is only available until 12.30. So that last hour that you're in the park, if you stay until the event is over, it's very limited things you can do. That's one thing I don't think is super cool about this event. The event's great, everything's been great so far, but if I had any complaints or any critiques, it would be that the, um, the rides need to stay open until maybe half hour before park closes or the event's over, and the food should probably be available until a half hour before the park closes. That's what I would say. Well, we'll see how it's going. I mean, this is still 1.30, so we still have about an hour and a half. I think the other rides are available to go on. Yeah. It's just that we can't ride the ones that we were the most excited about. Like, we didn't get yeah. to do Hagrid's at all, and we only got to do VelociCoaster once. We were hoping to ride it more than one time. But if we do this event again now, at least we know get online for those early. Yeah. And we're letting you guys know, if you do this event and you want to ride those big rides, get on them early. Don't wait until close to midnight because they will start shutting them down. Right, and I mean, for, for um, attendees like us, we live 20 minutes from Universal. We're pass holders, we can come back anytime we want. This ride is always here and we can just ride it. Um, but for people who are coming from out of town, or are not pass holders and this is the only chance they'll get to come to Universal this year, be aware that, uh, yeah, as Mel said, ride your favorite rides first. Hogwarts looks so cool. They got this little overlay, this little nighttime projection on it, and it looks so nice. This is really cool. The event is almost over, so we're gonna head out. The big question here is, was it worth it? So, I'm gonna give my opinion first. I think that for over $200, this might be something that might be worth it to splurge on once in a while, but I probably, I don't know. The thing is, I feel like these after hours events are very hard to get your money's worth out of. It's super cool that the wait times are so low and it's really easy to get on rides, but I feel like there's not enough time to actually ride things. like. We didn't, I mean, I guess it's kind of our fault that we didn't know that, that the roller coasters were only open until before midnight, even though the event goes on to 1.30. And it, actually, most of the rides are closed well before then. Yeah. Not yeah. even just the roller coasters. But you, I mean, with the food, you get plenty of food to eat. They do feed you. They keep you from being hungry. You also get free snacks too, like popcorn and slushies and 
bottles of water. So I, I don't want to say that it's not worth it. It's definitely a lot of fun. I just think it's very expensive. I feel like it's just hard to get $200 worth out when I'm a person that really is more into the rides and I feel like you're really only getting about three hours of ride time. That's yeah. my opinion. That's my opinion. I would agree partially with that. I would say um, it depends on what you're expecting to get out of it. I think for the price and for what it is, I'm not sure this is great for somebody who has never been to Universal before because it's you really would just get a little taste of it. And I think for that amount of money, you can get a, uh, a couple of day tickets and really experience the park. Or splurge a little more and get one of the premium on-site hotels and get express passes for a couple of days. Which, um, are, included which are included for staying right. at one of those premium hotels. So I think there are some other options if you're coming from out of town. For a pass holder like us, um, where we can come anytime we want, we live 20 minutes away, I think Mel's right. It's good to splurge every once in a while. I don't know if we're going to do the next one in June, but maybe the next December one or well, November there's, one. Right now it's November. There's two coming up to clarify that for December of 2021. Yes. And now it's been announced that there will be more of these events in June of 2022. So I guess what I'm thinking Adam is trying to say is December of 2022, 22. not next month. Right. Next month Maybe, is sold out. Right. These are very popular events. They are. People definitely enjoy them. I thought it was fun. It's just for for me, I feel like it's a lot of money for, you know, yeah. compared to what you're actually getting back out of it. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. So it's, it's a mixed bag. I think it's really good in a lot of ways. I had a lot of fun. I think you're paying for a lot of fun and you're getting a lot of fun out of it. Um, but in the same respect, this... Uh, like one ticket just my ticket alone was half the price of my entire annual pass with in my annual pass i have no block out dates and uh i get free parking yeah we have the so, second so I think, level of uh annual pass the one where you don't have the valet but yeah. you don't have any blackout dates correct all right chums that's gonna do it for us it's late we're gonna head home be sure to subscribe to this channel right this second if you've not done so already. Smack the like button and hit that bell icon to receive all notifications every single time we upload a new video. And until next time, we will see you guys at the parks.